troubleshooting Kerberos delegation. Welcome to a short clip discussing Kerberos delegation. During this clip, we'll cover what Kerberos delegation is, how it works at a high level, and how to generally troubleshoot it. The intent of this clip is to provide you with a solid fundamental understanding of Kerberos delegation, which you can then apply to your daily job. What is Kerberos delegation? Kerberos delegation is the ability to allow an application or service on a remote computer to do actions on behalf of a user and acting as that user. Kerberos was integrated into the initial release of Active Directory with Windows 2000 and the delegation feature was included from the beginning. It should be noted that impersonation and delegation are considered the same when talking about Kerberos and they are interchangeable terms. Why is Kerberos delegation such a widely used feature? Delegation is used to securely access resources on behalf of that user with only that user's level of access to the resource. It achieves this without additional prompts for credentials. The Microsoft Kerberos implementation allows for many unique and complex scenarios which utilize Kerberos delegation. This uniqueness creates a challenge when troubleshooting Kerberos delegation issues since you and sometimes the customer may not know what the expected behavior should be. It is easy for developers to utilize Kerberos through the use of public APIs without having to understand how Kerberos works. Many Microsoft products utilize Kerberos delegation including SharePoint, SQL Server, IIS, and Exchange. Here is a basic example of Kerberos delegation. We have a client that connects to a front-end server. This front-end server needs to pull data from a back-end server. Without delegation, the front-end server would need to pull data using its own credentials, which may not be desirable. With delegation, the web server can access the data as the client user. This is good for security reasons as well as auditing reasons. Regarding security, you can restrict the data by user on the database and not rely on the application to restrict access. Regarding auditing, you can tell which user request data instead of a generic service account showing up in the audit logs. Here is the flow of traffic regarding Kerberos tickets. In this example, we assume the client already has a service ticket for the web server. Step 1. The client connects to the web server and supplies a service ticket for the web server. Step 2. The web server needing to connect to the SQL database sends the ticket to the KDC on the domain controller. Step 3. The KDC checks to see if the delegation is allowed. Assuming it is allowed, it returns a service ticket for the SQL server. This ticket is for the user. The web server uses it to impersonate the user when they access the SQL server. Step 4. The web server opens a connection to the SQL server, sending this ticket and querying the database for some data. Step 5. The SQL server checks authorization, then returns the data to the web server. It is important to note that the authorization is performed against the user's account and not the web server's account. Step 6. The web server then builds the page and sends it to the client. Now that we have a good idea of the expected ticketing flow, what is required to make Kerberos delegation work? First, the user's account in Active Directory must not be marked as sensitive. If the account is marked as sensitive, delegation will fail. Second, SPNs must be registered for the middle tier and back-end services. If SPNs are not registered properly, Kerberos authentication will fail. And finally, the service account that is running the middle tier service must be trusted for delegation. Not every account can request a service ticket on behalf of another user. Special permissions must be added to any account that needs to perform delegation. Now we understand what Kerberos delegation is, how it works, and what is required. There will be times that Kerberos delegation fails, and it is important to understand how to troubleshoot this. The first step in troubleshooting Kerberos delegation issues is to understand the infrastructure. You need to know who the user is, where they first connect, and where they are going to be delegated to. Once you understand the basics, you will know how it should be configured to function properly. If we know who the user is, we can check to ensure they are not marked as a sensitive account. If we know where the user makes the initial connection, we can find what service account is being used. 
Once we know that, we can check to ensure that the account is trusted for delegation and that any SPNs for that service account are registered properly. If we know where they are being delegated to, we can check those service accounts to ensure SPNs are registered properly there as well. Network captures help tell the story of what is working and what isn't working. It is important to get a capture at all points. This includes the client, the middle tier server, and the backend server. It is also important to flush all Kerberos tickets before taking the capture so you can see the requests and any possible errors. Use KList Purge to flush the cache at all points. Once you have taken the captures, you can filter to show only Kerberos traffic. In Network Monitor, use the filter Kerberos V5. Alternately, you could use a standard filter called Authentication Traffic. In Wireshark, the filter name is called Kerberos. In the capture, we can check for Kerberos errors. SPN unknown indicates the SPN is not registered or is registered in more than one location. App error modified indicates the SPN is registered in the wrong location. Finally, let's go over the common problems that cause Kerberos delegation to fail. First, SPNs for the services are not registered. Without the SPNs, Kerberos will fail. Second, the SPNs are registered incorrectly. This can include registering the SPN to the wrong account or registering the SPN on more than one account. Third, the service account is not trusted for delegation. Check the delegation tab for the service account and ensure that the proper delegation settings are in place. And lastly, the user's account is marked as sensitive. If the user's account is marked as sensitive, it cannot be delegated to any service. Thank you for your time. I hope this was informative.